Hello, hello. Today, we're going to take a look at some differences of stamps. It's things I've covered before, but I'm going to use a different stamp in, as an example. Um, so we've got a few, I've got a few different types here. Um, one is the, a manufactured type stamp, um, pretty typical, raised, you know, design. Um, uh, so it would equal probably, I don't know, what is that, is about seven millimeters. And then this is one for me, this is the Star Etoile, I believe. And that one um, is, is a bit less than a quarter inch. These two would stamp similarly. Um, I could totally get away with using a one pound hammer on that in a pretty standard setup. Um, here's the, the opposite of, uh, of uh, all of these would be this huge Tamarack. It's a monster size stamp. I'd want to use a four pound hammer and definitely have a stump like surface for that one, um, et cetera, et cetera. Using, pulling out all the tricks for that. But the results are, are, um, are nowhere near you know, what um, this would be. Just, they're just different ball games, and that's fine. And then somewhere kind of in the middle would be a, uh, a jellyfish stamp. And I'm going to use that, going to use that today. And we're going to stamp with that one with some, we're going to, I'm going to try a one pound hammer without any underlayment. And then a um, two and a half pound hammer without any underlayment. And then we'll add some underlayment and take a look at the results and see what we get. All right. See, the, the difference is that it's larger and it has more surface area. So um, that's going to be a little, a little different. Um, I kind of want to, wish I had some thicker add-on. All right, well, let's, what I've got just here is a 26 gauge uh, copper. It is dead soft. I could soften it a little bit more for even uh, better results probably, but it's what I'm used to. I'm, 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 I've got some consistency in my setup here. I use paper both to help um, keep the metal clean and sometimes as an underlayment. And by underlayment, I mean something between the black and the metal. It helps push up the detail. The other thing that I've been using more of lately is this. I used to call it craft foam. It's actually printing plate foam. And it's common that it's been commonly used for um, rolling mill impressions in that it helps, again, push the detail up into the metal. Um, and that's the same logic here, right? So, but every stamp is gonna be a little bit different and everyone's setup is gonna be a little bit different. So when you get a new stamp, assure that you're grabbing some scrap and practice and take notes and see which, which, what works for you. And once in a while, maybe, you know, you're used to smaller uh, manufactured stamps and maybe you decide the larger ones aren't for you. Sounds, that, that, and that's totally understandable. Um, sometimes it's, it's, what, it's what we're accustomed to. So let's give a shot with this one with a one pound hammer. I use a Delrin, by the way, for multiple reasons. Partially it's because my stamps have a little, they're, they're, I like that they're a little bit more sharp. They've got a little bit more bite. All right, let's give this a shot now with just a tiny little, little one pound on my non-bouncing surface. This is critical. If I were to use a, a, a table here, I would probably have way too much movement and I'd get some um, mirror strikes. So particularly if I'm not able to set it. But by the way, when I'm, I'm doing this one, I'm going to try to set, hopefully pay attention enough, to try to set the, the sharper part of this. That's, that would be a natural point of, I guess what I would call registration. So let's get that set up there. Let me try to turn a little bit here. All right. I, I don't think I've ever done a one pound of this. You ready? All right, I'm gonna try to set the edge. Boom, and hit the other side, boom. <laughs> Sound effects are free. All right, and a couple more. I can't, this is not a one strike stamp. No, nope, not gonna happen. That's just, this is definitely a tilt and tap. And I think a lot of times when people tilt and tap, they're really exaggerating it. You don't need to do that. And and um, I don't know if you even really want to. You want you're, you also wanna kind of focus attention in the middle. And that's my opinion. Again, what works for you, what works for you. All right, sometimes when I do it too, I'm tilting it and I'm driving it this way toward that corner and this way toward this corner. And I'm doing it that way. All right, I'm gonna take a look at the back. Since it's a one pound hammer, I can't necessarily see what's happening on the back as much. But um, we'll take a look at this with the next with the next hit. Let's see what the one pound did. Drum roll. All right, so it is st stuck on there a little bit. It's got a little bite. Just take your Delrin and or whatever and, and just tap it off. Um, no need to. Yeah, I should have hit the top a little bit more. 
All right. One pound is a challenge. Let me give that a shot just for the heck of it. See if I can get this re-registered. If it's deep, sometimes a one pound doesn't leave enough depth for me to get it locked in again. It feels like it's locked in. Should we risk it? I think it's locked in. All right. I'm gonna, I'm going to get it locked in and then I need to really focus on that top. All right, so it is. Now I can, that's better. Now I actually, I know that I, um, I defer when I hit, I'm not consistent. You know, and that's why you spin, you hit more than once. But all right, I think that's good. Let's hope I didn't, let's hope I got it set right here. Let's get the peak, pop it off. All right, there we go. Yeah, I did. I got the top. Good, good. All right. We'll take a look at the results here. Well, we could take a look at the results now. Let's see. Is that, is that easy enough to see? It looks pretty good, actually. Not bad. Not bad. Surprised me for a one pound. But again, what I've got here is I've got the uh, um, dead soft, and I've got a super solid surface. Shit, that fast. All right. Let's try now. I'm flatten this up a little bit. Let's do the two and a half pound, which is kind of my go-to um, without any underlayment and see what happens. Turn to the side a little bit. All right, my trusty cook, two and a half pound dead blow. Flip it around. Now, take a look at the back. And it's hard to tell without the underlayment how I think I need to hit a little bit more over here. Let's give that a shot. There we go. Let's take a peek at that. That looks pretty good. I'm actually surprised the results are, are good without an underlayment. Let's take a look at that. That was easier to do than the one pound. The one pound took a lot of effort and I had to go in there and hit it again. Um, two and a half pound. So, okay. I will... Uh, Fifteen of these at the end here, and we'll take a look and at the results, which are less different than different than I thought they'd be. Let's try a folded office paper. I like a little. It's the little bit thicker uh, printer paper. Let's try that with the two pound as an underlayment. Let's see what we get. Turn it around because I defer. I'm kind of hitting each corner at that point. You can really tell um, on the back there uh, that it's driving up more detail. Can you see that? Yeah, interesting. And I can tell that I've gotten, let me just double check here. I've hit it pretty well, I think. I think I got that other edge there. Okay, I'm gonna give that a go. And I'm not gonna flatten it out yet. That looks good, that looks really good. I like it, all right. Now let's use the printing plate foam, just for the, just for giggles, right? Okay. So again, I'm going to place this guy down. And, ready? All right, hit it enough without lifting it, and then I'm just gonna do it again, because I know that I don't hit it consistently. And that really did drive up more detail, and I think I need to hit this side. A little bit more. Just a little tappy tap. You can see that that drove up even more detail, right? So an advantage there. Okay, move that to the side. Let's get this off. Flatten it out. Mm -hmm. Looks really good. That looks really good. Let's take a peek. Don't get all the way around. All right, so that is actually is the, the best result so far. I don't know if you can see that or not. I think so. All right, let's add a quick patina without wasting too much of your time here. But patina can drive out the details again. It's all about driving out the details. I normally use an oil-based Sharpie. I'm just going to, just going to use a, um, Sharpie here. You'll blow on it. Use this 
remove paper to remove some of it. Uh, pretty good. A bit more. Where's my polishing pad? Three and polishing pad. Drive out some of it. And the blue, three and blue bristle brush. Let's give this a quick. Quick go around. I'm going to do this quite a bit more, but we'll just do this as a quick demo here. Bring the camera down and take a look here at what we've got. The first one is the one pound. Not bad, actually. It did not. I did. I could have uh, moved it a little more to that right side there. Second one is the two and a half pound, no underlayment. Third one is paper underlayment. Fourth one is craft foam underlayment. Actually, Surprisingly good results on all of them, honestly. But one was a little, some are a little easier than the other. Some take a little less effort. So, well, there we go.